Hear me and rejoice. You are about to die at the hands of the children of... Wait, what are you guys... That's... Whoa! Oh, no. No, no, no. Don't eat me. Don't eat me. Featured in episode 5 of Marvel's What If series, the quantum virus is a virulent neurological disease originating from the quantum realm that turned ordinary people into flesh-craving zombies. Narrated by Uatu the Watcher, a member of an immortal extraterrestrial species that was assigned to observe Earth and its solar system, What If explores the various alternate timelines within the multiverse in which major moments from the MCU occur differently. In this universe, our heroes are beset by an unrelenting virus inspired by the Marvel Comics Hunger Virus, which we covered a while back. Links in the description. Janet Van Dyne contracted a quantum virus that corrupted her brain. So when she finally reunited with her husband after 30 long years... Oof. Mom? As seen with the infection of Hank and his apprentice Scott Lang after he'd rescued his infected wife from the quantum realm, the quantum virus was transmitted via bites and scratches. This begins a process of contamination that induces a cytokine cascade, a fatal immune reaction consisting of a positive feedback loop between cytokines and white blood cells, which is further exacerbated by bacteria that resides in the mouths of zombies. As the virus spreads, it induces a fatal cytokine storm, which causes fevers, aches, and fatigue. And as the infection develops, the virus infects the brain, neural structures, and synapses before overloading the limbic system responsible for behavior. After a varied passage of time, victims would turn into zombies that develop a hunger that could only be satiated by the ingestion of living flesh. Unlike other zombies in popular culture, those infected with both the hunger and quantum virus still retain their intelligence and personalities. And if they had superpowers, they would even keep most of their abilities, with the exception of healing factors that would have been spent fighting the virus. While the precise origin of the quantum virus is known to be the quantum realm, in the comics, all that we know is that a temporal paradox is responsible for the existence of the hunger virus in multiple universes, one that is curiously created by none other than Uatu the Watcher, but more on that later. In this episode, the quantum virus is shown to have a 100% infection rate, turning absolutely anyone that was bitten into walking, talking, undead beings. While these zombies kept their former intelligence, their self-control was overtaken by hunger. Sharon? I think you've had enough, Cap. To stop the plague, the Avengers assembled and arrived at San Francisco, but Hank and the other zombies proceeded to infect them as well, which only accelerated its spread across the world. Once Earth's mightiest heroes joined the infected, no one else stood a chance. While characters like Captain America and the Scarlet Witch had an accelerated healing factor that staved off the virus for as long as possible, they would all inevitably succumb to its effects. What I found most interesting is that both the hunger and quantum virus aroused a hunger in the infected that operated in a similar manner as addiction. Despite their necrotizing flesh, the hunger was entirely psychological, with infected hosts not needing the sustenance provided from eating living flesh. This addictive characteristic is exemplified with the quantum virus, with the discovery that Vision had managed to keep the zombie horde surrounding him at bay using the Mind Stone. He also explains that the Mind Stone emits a subfrequency that, when focused, was able to cure Scott Lang. This is actually quite similar to the hunger virus, where the cure was essentially isolating the infected and giving their minds time to get over the addiction. Chala? We don't have much time. We have to run. Nkosia. The vision grabbed me in San Francisco. Thought he was saving me. He was just picking up takeout. He's been keeping him alive to feed his zombie bride, that goth chick. Knew it. In the comics, through the means of an eternal time loop, the plague both begins and ends with the Watcher of Earth-C sending a zombified sentry from his reality to infect Earth-2149. While his intentions aren't clear at the start, his actions make a lot of sense by the end. When Zombie Sentry arrived, the Avengers went to investigate but were quickly infected and spread the virus to the other heroes. The Silver Surfer then appeared and announced the coming of Galactus, only to be killed and eaten by the Avengers, who absorbed his cosmic powers. In less than 24 hours, all of Earth had been infected, in part due to a zombified Quicksilver who traversed the world within minutes, biting humans, heroes, and villains alike, who in turn went on a feeding rampage. 
Constructing a machine using vibranium to unite their newfound cosmic powers, the zombies take Galactus down, eat him, and use his immense powers to spread hunger across the universe. Wanting to spread the pathogen further, Ant-Man attempts to use multiversal technology powered by the Sentry, basically Marvel Superman, to spread the hunger virus to alternate universes. Luckily, he's stopped by the remaining heroes, who use Stark's nanobots designed to fight cancer cells to defeat the remaining infected, except for the Sentry, who is protected by his containment tube. Uatu the Watcher then appears and, having observed the entire run of events, came up with what he believed to be a perfect solution, to send the Sentry to Earth-2149 of the past, preventing him from doing any further damage in the present. By sending him back in time, Uatu was able to contain the zombie apocalypse to this closed time loop. As such, the entire comic run is a mind-bending temporal paradox with no beginning or end. The What If Zombies episode essentially takes many of its cues from the comics, with Uatu playing a vital role in both, though in the animated series he has so far chosen not to interfere. Honestly, if I could fix this, if I could punish you instead, I would. But I can't interfere. You more than anyone else should understand that meddling with time and events only leads to more destruction. Despite the Mind Stone being the key to curing the infected, it's explained that when Vision tried this process with Wanda, her magical powers fought it. Worse still, after saving Black Panther, the android amputated T'Challa's leg and fed it to her, along with the bodies of other human survivors. Not unlike Hank Pym in the comics who, after getting infected, turns into Giant Man and knocks T'Challa out and starts feeding on his leg. Realizing the error in his ways, Vision helps the rest of the group escape as Okoye is captured and killed by Maximoff. He points them to a hangar containing a quad jet before ripping out his Mind Stone to give them a chance to cure the world while atoning for his sins. <laughs> Oh, nice save, big guy. Banner, Barnes, and Hope then fend off Wanda and the zombie horde as Parker, Lang, and T'Challa head to Wakanda to find a way to amplify the Mind Stone's signal. During the trip, Spider-Man mourns the losses they've endured that day, and Black Panther consoles him, explaining that in Wakandan culture, death isn't the end, and that they would remain with them as long as they were remembered. However, unknown to all of them, Wakanda had already been surrounded by zombies and a zombified Thanos, who, only missing the Mind Stone for his Infinity Gauntlet, waits patiently for his final prize. Having watched all these events, the Watcher concludes that even in the darkest of times, humans will always give all to save their planets, even if doing so could bring an end to their universe. To me, this implies that much like Earth C and Earth 2149 in the comics, due to the unintentional actions of our heroes, the Earth and eventually the universe would be corrupted by the quantum virus. Listen to me, we all know my time's up, okay? And if I have to go, I might as well go out fixing the mess I started. With that being said, that's all for today, folks. I really love this episode, and damn was it amazing to hear Chadwick Boseman's voice one more time. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit like and subscribe to stay up to date on all my content. And uh, yeah, if there's anything else you'd like to request, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film and Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Zombie freaking apocalypse, and somehow I'm still driving. What is the problem? I thought you were an Uber driver. No, no, I'm a personal chauffeur. There's a difference. <laughs> All right, everybody, it's Grand Central.